feel threatened, maybe like someone's following you, you can call for help by taking out your phone, opening the phone app, dialing 911. But let's say you need to do it a lot quicker. Maybe you don't want them knowing that you're calling for help. Most people don't know that you can call 911 from an iPhone without touching the screen. You simply press the on-off button, the one on the right side of the phone, five times quickly. It's going to do two things. The sound of an alarm and call 911. Depending on which iPhone you have, you may be asked to drag a slider to make the SOS call. But with the new iPhones, the 8, 8 Plus, or X, it'll place the call automatically to the nearest 911 call center based on your phone's GPS. It will also share your phone's location. After calling 911, the phone will then send a text message to your emergency contacts. They'll see that you've called for help and your exact location. Now, you may want to set up your emergency contacts. You can do that in the Health app under medical ID, settings, emergency SOS, you open the health app and then tap edit to add names and phone numbers from your contact list. Yeah, this is something you will probably never need, but it's still a good idea to get it set up on your phone for safety. We're going to talk quickly about iOS 13. This is a quick overview. It's a big update. There are a lot of new things on there. One of the big ones is dark mode, so you can have uh, uh, the contrast on your phone. It actually works better at night, so you can see your phone better. Photos and camera has a big, big update. They've uh, they've actually improved the uh, the photos app and the, the editing. Your photos tab now is uh, will have days, months, and in years on there and it'll show you what it thinks is your best picture. The editing has gone up uh, tremendously so you can do a lot of things as far as uh, cropping auto enhancing for your phone, uh, the lighting, privacy and security. Sign on with Apple is one of the, the big things that they're really pushing here. It's a simple way to sign on to your apps <clears throat> and you basically sign in with your Apple ID and it replaces uh, a fake email address uh, for all the sign-ons that ask you to sign on with your email address. Uh, everything has been more secure. Maps has a big update. Uh, it's really uh, detailed. Uh, as far as the, the map, it shows much more uh, graphic detail. It has a street view. Uh, they, you can add a lot of your favorites to it. Siri has a new voice. Uh, there are a lot of shortcuts that you can, you can select. Here, uh, they've made some changes to the way you do iPads. They've added uh, some new faces as far as your emoji. One of the nice things here is quick path typing, where you can just slide your uh, finger across the keypad. Uh, Reminders is a big, big app. It's um, changed everything. It changes the way it looks, and it lets you make reminders such as when you want to get out uh, of a uh, arrive at a location. It'll tell you what you were actually there for. Uh, has a new toolbar, CarPlay, if you have a new uh, car with CarPlay in it, that's completely changed. Uh, it gives you a new dashboard. It lets you change with the apps and still keep your map up. Uh, the, it'll bring up uh, your calendar appointments during the day. Uh, iOS 13 is a lot faster. It's about opens up about 30% faster and your apps are smaller. They're about half the size of the old one. So when you download them, augmented reality now puts you into the screen. Uh, there are not a new apps as far as health. It uh, has things such as uh, apps for, for women to track their monthly cycles. It has uh, sleep uh, apps in there. Notes has a big uh, 
uh, change. It's now in uh, uh, thumbnails. Uh, Apple uh, voice control lets you uh, change the things to your mail is now got new formatting in it, so it, it looks much differently. There are a lot of new uh, fonts that you can use. Notes has been improved with a gallery view. Your Safari uh, has a new uh, opening page with your favorites all on it. I said the, the uh, personalized health app, a text editing, uh, a files app, so that it looks more like Finder, and it has, it has a downloads folder in there. <clears throat> so these are all the enhancements you're going to see. Dark look, photos, as I said, has a big one in there. Uh, that's really nice. Uh, camera, if you have a newer phone, camera has a lot of stuff. Privacy and security, they've, they've also added in security enhancements for if you go into Wi-Fi. As I said, sign in with Apple, hide your email address, and it will work on, even on Android phones. So uh, Maps has a huge update. It gives you turn-by-turn -turn directions and actually tells you to turn at the next light rather than turn left now. Junks of View, you can share your ETA with your um, with your family if you need to. Siri, as I said, has a new voice. Uh, there are more shortcuts built into it. Uh, you have a lot of uh, changes as far as your Messages app. Uh, it uh, makes it easier to search and find messages. The quick path uh, typing in the keyboard has some new changes. Reminders has an all new app. It's it's really uh, going to be a, a help if you want to use reminders. CarPlay, as I said, has some big new changes. The, you can see a change in your performance, augmented reality. Accessibility allows you to use voice control to do a lot of things on your phone now. And then you have some other things. Apple News is going to be on there. Your battery, is, you can uh, control the way it charges a lot better. Calendar has some new uh, apps. Do not disturb while driving is uh, has got some improvements. And the Files app has a lot of new things on it. And Find My, that's one of the big things. So they've combined Find My Phone and Find My Friends. Uh, and now it can find your, your device. Uh, even if the phone is turned off because it uses Bluetooth, it'll tell you the last location it was. So that's a, that's really a, a nice feature, especially if you lose your phone or if you have one of your loved ones who is you want you want to find out where they are. You can actually do it that way. It's really good. Health, as I said, has a lot of really new updates that are going to designed to work with the Apple Watch. And that's it.
customers. And in this video, we're going to go hands-on and take a closer look at iOS 12's new screen time feature. Last week, Apple introduced a slew of new features for its upcoming version of iOS, iOS 12. One of the focal points for Apple was digital health, and with that developed a new setting section called Screen Time, where you'll find various reports and settings that will help you keep track on how you use your phone. To access Screen Time, simply go into the Settings menu and select the Screen Time option right underneath Do Not Disturb. From here, you'll see a quick look at your Screen Time dashboard and four subsections below. A list of compatible devices will be located at the top, and if you select one of them, you will see the various reports for screen time, like what apps or app categories are mostly taking up your screen time, how many times your phone is picked up in an hour or day, and how many notifications come through in a day or an hour, and what apps are sending you the most notifications. If you want to schedule some downtime for you or your family member, you can go into the downtime section, and after creating and entering a specific screen time passcode, you will be able to enable downtime and schedule the specific times you'd like to detach yourself from your phone. App Limits is also pretty simple. This section will let you just set a daily time limit for specific app categories. These limits will reset every night at midnight, and categories include gaming, social networking, and entertainment, just to name a few. Unfortunately, you cannot set limits to a specific app in this section, but you can do so by going back to your most used apps report in screen time and tap the hourglass next to the application. From here, you can set how many hours a day you'd like to limit the app, and this will apply to all devices that are signed in to the corresponding iCloud account. The Always Allowed section is where you will choose the apps that will always be available to you during any scheduled downtime, or if you've selected the All Apps and Categories app limit. By default, the phone app is automatically selected, which will also include messages and FaceTime. If email is something you absolutely can't disengage from, for example, you can go ahead and add that to your list of always allowed apps, too. The final subsection, Content and Privacy Restrictions, is probably one of the more robust sections of the Screen Time Settings menu, but can also offer a lot of useful features that will keep your kids from viewing inappropriate content or making unwanted purchases. From here, you can enable various settings for iTunes and App Store purchases, and various content restrictions for the App Store, web content, Siri, and Game Center. Screen Time could be a very helpful tool for those who are trying to improve their digital health and monitor exactly how much time you or your family is spending on their mobile devices. So what are your thoughts on Screen Time? Let us know in the comment section down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. With iOS 11 comes a new feature called Do Not Disturb While Driving. This feature works in a similar way to the traditional Do Not Disturb mode, but it can detect when you are in a car. So if you connect to your car's Bluetooth, or if your phone detects that you are moving at a rate similar to a car, Do Not Disturb While Driving can activate to mute your notifications, your texts, and phone calls, and it won't light up your screen or make any noise. This will hopefully help with distracted driving, which is a major issue. Now also, if you get a message while this feature is active, your phone can automatically respond to tell the sender that you are driving and can't reply. But if the sender really needs to get to you, if they text urgent, it'll break through Do Not Disturb and you'll get that message. And if you're connected to your car's Bluetooth, phone calls will still come through. In settings, you can set who will get an automatic reply, and you can adjust what that reply says. And you can also set when you'd like Do Not Disturb while driving to be activated, either manually, when connected to your car, or automatically based on motion. And if you're a passenger in a car, you can still use your phone just by deactivating Do Not Disturb. Now this feature can easily be turned off, but if you have someone that you don't want to turn it off, like a teenager that just started driving, you can go into settings under restrictions and disable the ability to make changes. Distracted driving is a major issue, so hopefully this will help and possibly even save lives. Do Not Disturb While Driving is coming in iOS 11. It's still in beta right now, so there may be some changes, but be sure to stay tuned to Mac Rumors for any other.
presented to you, and as you can see, it looks quite different than before. The new design is meant to put your best photos front and center, along with the new view options organized by day, month, and year. Each of the time-based viewing options cuts out clutter, like screenshots, photos of receipts, and duplicate images, displaying all of your best memories without all of the cruft. Photos are displayed in a tiled view, with your best images displayed as large squares surrounded by smaller related photos. So if you go inside of the Day tab, photos that you've taken will be organized by each day, obviously. Months will be presented by photos categorized into events, showcasing some of the best moments of that month. And then with the year view, everything is broken down into subsections of each month for that year. Overall, it's a much more streamlined approach and better way of seeing things. And since a lot of the unnecessary photos like receipts and screenshots have been cut out, you'll be able to see a lot of great images and videos from specific locations, concerts, holidays, and much, much more front and center. Speaking of videos and even live photos, that content will be auto-played silently while you're looking through photos in the day view, making your browsing experience much more dynamic and fun. The For You section is also still available, which was introduced last year in iOS 12, and it's still in its own tab, which also shows curated photos, but the Photos tab focuses on specific dates while For You aggregates content from multiple dates like beach days, different trips, people, pets, etc. One new feature of the For You section specific to your contacts that you have photos of in the People album, and also if you have their birthdays assigned to them in the Contacts app, Apple will show you photos of the person in the For You section of the Photos app on their birthday. Editing a photo or video just got a lot better than ever with the overhauled editing interface, which you can get to by tapping the edit button on photo or videos. Rather than hiding editing tools down at the bottom of the image in a series of small icons, iOS 13 puts them front and center in a new slider that lets you scroll through each adjustment option. It kicks off with the standard auto adjust, but if you swipe to the left on the editing tools, you can choose the specific adjustment that you need. Speaking of those tools, there are tons to choose from, including some new tools like Vibrance, White Balance, Sharpness, and more. For each editing tool, there's a slider that lets you tweak the intensity of the adjustment, which allows for more controlled edits than before. So for example, you can select the Exposure Adjustment tool to brighten or darken a photo, and then just use the slider to quickly get the desired effect. Intensity has specific numbers, so it's easy to tell how much of the effect that you've applied at a quick glance. The same intensity slider applies for filters too, making filters a lot more functional in iOS 13. Portrait Lighting added a new effect called High Key Mono, which is a black and white effect very similar to the Stage Light Mono, but it also adds a white background instead of a black background. The best part about Portrait Lighting in iOS 13 has to be the new adjustment tools, which can allow users to tweak the added lighting. It's designed to allow you to adjust the intensity of the lighting, which can drastically change the look of a portrait image. So think about if you're in a studio and they have the lights all around you, kind of like what I do here. Uh, if I wanted to move them back and forth, you would notice the lighting effect would change. So that's pretty much what you're doing with the intensity slider. A lot of the new features that we saw in the photo editor also makes its way to video editing for the first time. Apple offers editing tools to adjust parameters like exposure, contrast, saturation, brightness, and more. Plus, there are built-in filters that you can apply. You can also use the same auto-adjust feature in videos that's long been available for photos to get a quick improvement. As I mentioned before, like the photo editing tools, in the video editor, you'll feature sliders to control the intensity of your adjustments so that you can make dramatic or subtle changes to the lighting, brightness, and other elements, and there continue to be available tools for adjusting video length. Another useful feature, in my opinion, is the ability to change the aspect ratio on the fly by utilizing some of those different aspect ratio options. So for social media, where square videos might perform or look a little better, users can select the square option and the video's aspect ratio will be adjusted automatically. The best part about this is if you decide that you don't like any of these changes you made to your videos, you can actually just revert back to the original footage without losing anything at any time. So let us know what you think of